Hi, this is Alan Gleeson for ADSR, and today we'll be looking at some alternate uses for Convolution Reverb using the Max for Live device Convolution Pro. Convolution Pro is one of the Max for Live devices that comes with Ableton Suite. The most common use for convolution processing is in terms of reverb, where you can select a room that's been sampled and then apply that to your mix or a sound. Altering properties of that space. What we're viewing in this area here is a sampled impulse of a particular room. Impulses can also be taken of hardware equipment, microphones, anything that resonates and that you can make a recording of it. Today we're going to see how it can be used for various sound design applications. This area here of the Convolution Pro allows you to drop audio in here. I'm going to go to my browser and I've already got a folder here of samples that I want to use and I'm going to drop one of these in here. Now you can see that the source is for Convolution which is where the folder is coming from. And once you drop one sample in from that folder the other samples that are contained within that folder are also available as Convolution sources. Now when I play that particular sound through the Convolution Pro let's bring it to the dry sound Convolution is a mathematical process where the spectral data of one sound is multiplied by the spectral data of the other sound. This particular sound that we've dropped into the Convolution is a recording I made of walking on ice. So we just auditioned the sound to begin with. So that's the sound we're using for the Convolution process and we're routing our synthesizer through that on a pre-fade sound. Any events or impulses contained within the sound will be evident in the result, causing an almost delay type effect. This is more evident on some other sounds here that I've created. We listen to this twig sound, which is the sound of twigs breaking. Just listen to the original sound. So every one of those events that we hear in the sound will manifest in the result as an impulse or a delay. I've actually pressed stop on playback here, but because the impulse itself is 14.35 seconds long, the delay will continue afterwards. Because this is a random recording, not timed to any particular tempo, it probably won't be in time if I play this in the context of the song. We can adjust the timing by adjusting the size and decay of the impulse. Let's audition this process on some other material. My first track here, I've got a drum loop. If I apply the same convolution to this, you'll obviously hear that the timing is off. You can tune it in tempo by a bit of EQ. It's a bit chaotic there. Bring the decay down, it's a bit more in control. Again, this impulse is quite long, so we have a long decay after the sound. I can reduce this even further into 0 0.05 of a second. So you can hear that it's giving a slight alteration to the timbre of the sound rather than actually adding any echo. I'll go to a different sound source and we'll audition some different types of convolution. We've got a bass line here. 
This time I'll use some more synthesized textures. This one here is a, listen to the original. So that dynamic in the original sound will be transferred onto anything that's processed through the convolution device. Bring the original level down. So obviously altering the size of the room will also alter the pitch of the result and also the length. With a bit of trial and error you can tune this to be in key with the actual original sound. Or to be a harmony of it. Depending on your source material, some trial and error is involved in getting a texture that works well in the context of your arrangement. We have more of a, a noise type percussion here. Let's audition some of the convolution sources that we have in our folder here. We have some words here. We listen to that original. We no longer live in a world. And listen to that in context of how it's applied to the sound. Give me some more textured result. Come back to one of our other examples. We have a basic string line playing here, nothing very exciting, but we apply the convolution to this. It becomes a lot more interesting. Now currently we're using in single mode where there's a single convolution impulse been applied but we can also work it in split mode where we've got one convolution for the early reflections and we've got another one for our late reflections As you can see we've got the random sample for the first one and the later ones we've got the words Apply that same process to our drum sound. The section on the right hand side allows us to further process the result. We can fade in the convolution, reverse it. And various controls for adjusting the length the amount of early reflections that would be in the case in our random sample here. Other controls allow you to further modify or modulate the sound. The possible results are infinite only based on the source material you choose and then the modulation settings that you apply. The convolution processing that's applied lends whatever timbre is in the original sound onto the sound that's been applied. This way you have infinite possibilities in the tonal characteristics that can be applied to a sample conjuring different types of materials and textures. Hopefully this has given you some food for thought about different ways you can incorporate this unique form of sound design into your mixes. This has been Alan Gleason for ADSR and I'll talk to you soon.